Good morning, everybody. It's the uh, 12th of November, 2022. I'm, as usual, in Baranovici. <clears throat> and uh, before I get into the little bit of news that I'll have to say, I'd like to first um, mention I. Earl Gray, or Mike at I. Earl Gray, a foreign agent. That you should uh, check out his channel. He's on an adventure at the moment to the Donbass. He is. Uh, God, I think it was gifted to him, one of these uh, Soviet-ish types of vans, off-road vans, very fascinating types of vehicles. I think he finds it that way too. Because I, when I first saw these things, I thought, boy, that's really something. It's like a van and you can go off-road with it, uh, load up people in it, and high clearance, so you know, if you're on rough roads and things, it looks like it'll handle quite well anyway. I don't think it's made for necessarily the highway at high speeds. But it's, uh, it's a great off-road type of vehicle. It looks like that to me. I don't know. Maybe we'd have to ask Mike his opinion. But anyway, like I said, he's on, on a quite an adventure. And he's, uh, I think it was on the way down when he had uh, run across some woman, unfortunately, uh, that got hit by a truck. And uh, her internal organs were virtually crushed. She was alive, I guess, when he got there. And... Uh, she really didn't have much of a chance, and the medics were kind of not doing as great a job as as they should have. Maybe they were less, not trained quite as well, I don't know. But the lights had gone out, I guess electricity is out wherever it was at, and maybe the visibility was so bad that uh, somehow this truck driver had hit this woman and he took off. Uh, you know, it was very horrific, horrific and, um, injuries. So, you know, anyways, having other adventures as well, and uh, you should check him out. I think one time he, he did a report at 4 o'clock in the morning. I think that his partner that he, that he was with had, uh, you know, they were staying, I think, in the Bohanka, and, and the guy was snoring, so he, so I guess Mike got, Mike got up and apparently did a, an update on the adventures, so. But anyway, it looks like uh, a real adventure. You should check that out. I just had to mention that. But uh, I should also mention some other, uh, you know, people that are that are uh, doing videos, that are vlogging, and uh, you know, I, I'd like to say my appreciation. And I'm sure those of you that that watch these uh, these YouTube vlogs and vlogs on Rumble as well also appreciate the work that these people are doing. Uh, let me wait. Everybody's got to be looking at me as if I'm from a different planet here. But uh, I made a list here of most of the people that, that come to mind. And, uh, uh, well, first let me say something. <laughs> I even wrote this down, but I didn't say it. That, uh, you know, Mike is on a mission. Mike from I. Earl Grey is on a mission down there. And he's uh, delivering some aid and assistance to, you know, some of the people, you know, that are displaced and and some of them that are having hardships in the Donbass area and uh, I'm hoping he's leaving some sort of a a link on there where you can maybe send some sort of donations he's a honest person so uh, you can be assured he's not going to uh, squander any sort of donations for for his own personal his own personal use like a, like a, a government certain governments do you know how that is of, you know, and then some of these these uh, these agencies, you know, in the past. So, uh, you know, and, and I hope that, that that it will get to him. That it's not if you're sending it to some places like uh, say Russia or Belarus or, or anything like that. You never know when the West is going to steal it or block it. Or uh, there are some some really nice people out there, <laughs> nice to themselves, I guess. Um, but anyway, like I was getting getting to, I wanted to mention some of these other people that have these vlogs that are doing. You know, really great work in these these difficult times right now. We're, we're as you know, we're going through a world revolution. These are really revolutionary times at the moment, and uh, and a lot of these people need need some kind of recognition. Here's some looks like a rooster chasing after the the chickens in there. So, but um, um, so. At the same time, I also want to mention those people that are 
that are leaving these really nice comments on my site. You know, it's good to know that there are a lot of people that are very good out there and uh, that it's not like a lot of these woke, crazy, knucklehead people that are really just hate mongers and out for themselves and and uh, are out for these terrible agendas and, and easily get brainwashed into thinking, you know, things that are at, actually to the detriment of humanity are actually good things, you know. I can mention certain aspects of climate change, you know, <laughs> or, or, or either this, uh, these pandemics or something like that when there's other, other motives involved rather than doing anything for humanity at all or the earth if you want to say that. I call the earth humanity too. But the people, let me see um, who I should mention. And, and, and um, these people inspire me just like the people that, that leave comments. You know, I'm, I'm inspired by, by some of the great things that people have been saying to me um, and the compliments as well. But uh, let's try if I made a list here. Where was it? Uh, um, I mentioned Mike at IRL Gray, and then there's the Alexes at the Duran and Garland Dixon, uh, Annie Yake, where I just saw her having an interview with, with uh, another great person, very great person, is, uh, is Scott Ritter. And of course there's Emil Kosman, and there's Jimmy Dore and Jackson Hinkle, you know, which are great friends, many others. And of course there's even uh, these comedians that actually do a lot, uh, a lot for humanity, but uh, you know, people maybe would leave them out because they're, they're comedians, but they, they actually have a, a, a bigger purpose in mind, you know, and they, these are they love humanity just like, uh, like, like the rest of us that are watching these videos and doing these videos do. And uh, Jimmy Dore, I, I, I suppose, was supposed to be a, a comedian anyway, but he's, you know, he's quite serious. And, and of course, there's uh, Russell Brand in a lot of ways, because he's very funny too, but doing fantastic things too. But there's um, like uh, Tyler Fisher, and you can't forget J.P. Sears. My brother from another mother, long-haired, hippie-type, Scandinavian-ish looking type of guys <laughs> like him. And uh, and then there's a, a lot of these political people that are noteworthy, <laughs> getting a lot of views here, that are uh, like Colonel Black, Jeffrey Sachs, and of course I said Scott Ritter, and there's Tulsi Gabbard, Colonel Douglas McGregor, and of course, there's there's even more, you know. I love Jeff, Jeffrey Sachs as well. And then there are these the other vloggers that are like on the on the scene right now. Is is of course uh, Mike from IRL Gray. He's on the scene, I guess you could say. But there's Patrick Lancaster, Gonzalo Lira, Ava Bartlett, and Graham Phillips, to name some. I'm sure there's more. I'm sure there's a lot of people I'm leaving out. Maybe some that'll occur to me, and I will start to think. Oh, I should have mentioned this person or that person. Um, but there's so many. And I didn't even realize there were so many until you start wanting to, wanting to make a list. And it's, uh, but I'm, it's, it's actually heartwarming, as you know, that know that there are a lot of these great people that are trying to do a lot, you know, to uh, at least expose maybe all of these terrible people in the world. Right now they're out for, for you know, profits and domination and 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 sometimes I don't even think they know what they want they just want to dominate some sort of a personality problems you know narcissism or or who knows what authoritarianism author, authoritarian personality as you know what that is about, about too and uh, you know I, I, I like I said a lot of these these uh, the other side the bad people in politics I wouldn't even put uh, Vladimir Putin at all in there because I think he's on our side and uh, this whole military operation in Ukraine it was geared to stop some of this aggressiveness and you can go back I don't know decades and see Russia and particularly Vladimir Putin saying just stop this stop doing this stop going you know and uh, the whole thing is to neutralize Russia and I learned about that and I'm sure that a lot of these other people and I mentioned that in the last video that the whole the whole plan is to neutralize Russia and to dominate you know and to exploit them 
and manipulate and just take their resources, you know, for the benefit of rich corporations and, and politicians and, and uh, you know, impoverished people. Like, look at what they've been doing to Africa all these generations, I guess you should say. Yeah. Anyway, I don't want to get into that. That's, that's a big... That's a big topic in and of itself that books have been written about. Uh, even the exploitation of people in America and but what's going on now. And the USA and Europe, you can't say that this isn't all designed. You know, you want to talk about you'll own nothing and be happy. Mm. Yeah, and they, I don't know, most of us, we can't say we didn't see it coming. So, because they've been telegraphing this stuff, but none of us really thought it was going to be possible. And, I, and I, sometimes I wonder what kicked it off. Was it was the was it did it was the kick off on you know September 11th, 2001, or you know was it later than that? Was it earlier than that? You know. But anyway, some of the news, uh, something that people have not reported in, but uh, like the vloggers. But I saw this. I didn't. I didn't see it actually. I had it told to me because I don't. I don't understand Russian yet. <laughs> And that's one of my main goals. I could give you a lot better news when I'm going to be start learning Russian a lot better. So that's that should be my priority, and it, in a way it is. But I'm still wanting to do these news things because I I kind of enjoy doing this. But in the Russian news, they were mentioning that uh, there's rioting now, thousands. I don't know how many, two thousand, but more than a thousand, I guess, in the Saudi Arabia. And uh, I, I'm. I can't verify that this is really that true or not, but I, I assume that it is. But they're rioting, um, saying things like death to the Saudi royals. And uh, if it is true, you can guess very easily on who's behind that, you know. Those of you that, uh, that watch those people that I mentioned, all of these, uh, these vloggers and uh, even the politicians and whatnot, you all know who was behind what what happened in Ukraine, and it's not Vladimir Putin being unprovoked going into Ukraine just because he's an evil guy, <laughs> and obviously that it's been going on for decades and decades. And Putin has been saying, "Stop doing this! Stop doing this!" And then uh, it came to the point where it was right on Russia's front door. Actually, I think it's actually right behind the front door because Ukraine you know, is actually, in truth, depending on your perspective, is maybe an integral part of Russia, or at least it was until the, the West, you know, for the past decades. And maybe even, maybe you can, you can even look back, like I said, with, uh, with uh, um, World War II, when uh, Bandera, you know, was active, and even after World War II in the 1950s, when these uh, security agencies ha were running Bandera um, after World War II, again, like I have to say, and it was a Soviet Union, and they were uh, conducting operations and it, to include assassinations and sabotage in the Soviet Union. And uh, the United States was not using Bandera, like I said. It was They were using uh, um, former coherence uh, uh, of Bandera, and uh, you never know what the British were doing because the British, you know, are very secretive in a lot of things. And their uh, their uh, military or what do we call it security operations was actually um, maybe copied to a large extent by Israel, where it's not just gathering information. Russia um, is involved in gathering information, their security services, but uh, the CIA to a smaller extent. But to a larger extent, Great Britain is also involved heavily in sabotage. So it's not just gathering information, it's gathering information and sabotaging. And Israel, as you notice, um, you know, inherited that, I guess, so to speak. So it's not just, you know, gathering information. And I think Russia probably has a very, very good and very effective uh, um, intelligence uh, apparatus but again, not involved in sabotage. And if you say that they are, it's probably US information, like all of the vast amounts of Western disinformation about, about Russia. And it makes you sometimes wonder, do they not know this stuff? You see, you see that Scott Ritter knew, and a lot of other people, 
But do you think that, that these American people, even today, don't know this stuff? So it's probably all just fake information to make you think, you know, that they believe certain things about Russia that's, that they actually don't. It's, it's, it's mostly to create perceptions of people watching the news that, that Russia is doing evil things or something. Uh, interfering in elections is just one example. When Russia doesn't interfere in any elections, we all know what country interferes in virtually every election on Earth every time there is an election. You know, isn't it, isn't it something what, uh, it's like cast the first stone, you know? <laughs> and that's what the USA, somebody should say that to the USA if you're, if you're completely innocent, you can go ahead and cast the first stone, but they're casting the stones and not innocent, so. But um, let's see what else I have written down here, because I wrote a lot of this stuff. Uh, my brain is, uh, I have a little bit of a Brandon, Brandon disorder, Brandon brain. So it's not like I can remember this stuff. Can't even uh, speak like, you, you, if you have to, that's another thing. You watch like Jackson Hinkle, you know, the guy's excellent in talking. He's a young guy. Probably that's why he's so good, because he's uh, 23, kind of like me. I always mention that. <laughs> of course, I'm a joking, joking, joking. But he's, uh, he's going to probably be really great as he gets older. He's still very young, you know at 23 years old and very intelligent guy and very well spoken so I, I I would suggest you you keep your eye on Jackson Hinkle and he's not afraid to learn things and uh, admit if he is uh, was off on things I think he once was a Democrat not long ago he ran for I believe it was a, a, a federal government congressional seat and did very 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 good at 19 years old and uh, you know, that was only like three or four years ago. But now, of course, I think he's more Republican or maybe independent. I don't know. But he likes all the right people and likes, uh, you know, and, and does a, likes a lot of the right things. He says he's a communist, but it's not the type of communist that, uh, that we were all conditioned to believe is communist. So, so I really don't know what to say about that. You know, like I said, we were all maybe indoctrinated in a certain way. I don't know if what he's talking about really is communism. So, because it doesn't really sound like any kind of communism that I've ever heard of. You, well, you should watch his show. It's called The Dive. So anyway, enough of that. And uh, let's go into some of these other little notes here I, I was talking about. Um, yes, this, uh, this problem in Saudi Arabia, these, these riots, uh, it's uh, obviously in response to, <laughs> it's very strange that all this time there was never any riots ever since 1971, especially when uh, Saudi Arabia uh, became the, the recipient <laughs> or the partner in uh, the, petro, the petrodollar situation. So I, I don't want to go into that, you know, the protection of the Saudi family in order, but then they have to in return sell in US dollars always and of course that's now going off track and it's it's uh, you know oil is going to be sold and already is being sold at other currencies rather than the US dollar and it's the USA in decline as you know that so oh yes that's that's important too now Ukraine apparently is building a wall between Ukraine and Belarus just like Poland has a, a wall supposedly complete between Poland and Belarus and Lithuania they had a uh, um, I, I guess I wouldn't say a wall but a, you could call it a wall maybe just Constantina wire between Lithuania and Belarus and that kind of makes you wonder if this is some sort of a a plan you know why would these people I mean it's not like Belarus is invading anyone they don't have a very big military and sure there are some Russian troops there's there's not enough Russian troops 9,000 you know, and Russia would never invade a NATO country unless they're first attacked. Because you know, Article 51, you attack uh, out of the cold a NATO country and you're in deep trouble. Russia has no interest to, they had friendly relations with Finland, for example. And why would they go to Sweden? And those, those two are now, you know, going into NATO. It really makes you wonder what, uh, what deals were made yeah, you know, in the back room. So 
And why would Finland, you know, that's it's always been curious, why would they give up neutrality? And if you find out the history of that neutrality, um, it's very, very fascinating because Russia virtually completely defeated Finland and then they let them say, they said, you have your own country in exchange for you declaring to forever be neutral. So that, that was an agreement. But now Finland decided they, they don't want to honor that. Well, that's part and parcel for what the West does anyway. They don't, they don't go by their agreements. They break them whenever it's... Uh, I guess they're now becoming quite westernized. You know, there's, there should be a lot, a lot to be said about this wall going up. That uh, they, Ukraine also had uh, mined the border. They had lots of landmines, thousands of landmines placed at the border. Uh, and, uh, you know, I can understand that. Probably in case Russia would invade and send troops through, you know. And, and that's, like I said, that part is understandable. That's no problem there. But, uh, and it's not, not a problem really with the wall, but the wall works both ways. It not only keeps people out, but it keeps, <laughs> it keeps people in. And I think they said that the main purpose of this wall was to prevent migration. So if they didn't say immigration, they said migration. So it's to keep the Ukrainian people in, you know. And it's so strange when you're looking at this. It's very similar to what happened after World War II with Eastern Germany uh, and the wall around Berlin. So things have been reversed now. And what we all thought were the good guys back then are now the bad guys and the bad guys are now the good guys. So I guess you exchange a white hat for a black hat and a black hat for a white hat. You know, like those old Western movies, you know. Belarus has also mentioned, and you, you haven't heard this in the news either, that there are thousands of train cars um, that Ukraine is holding that, are, that belong to Belarus. You know, when they were shipping products like coal or grains or anything into Ukraine, Ukraine just never bothered sending back the train cars. So they belong to Belarus, and I guess there's at least a thousand, maybe two, I think I heard oh, a thousands, so it's probably at least 2,000 train cars. And you won't hear that in the news, and I, I find, that, find that a big deal. But um, these walls going up, this signifies a new Iron Curtain, as I was uh, indicating. So remember the Ber Berlin Wall? My mother, I remember my mother mentioning, because she lived in Eastern Germany at that time, and she was mentioning um, when she, I think it was in, when she, when she left, well, before it was before the wall was going up. So she had to get out, you know, before she couldn't get out. So she left East Germany. And I think she traveled with some Mormon uh, um, missionaries. I think she was pretty young or something at the time and then went to the United States. And then, of course, uh, when you go there after the war, you're highly, highly advised never to speak German. So, you know, I was raised and, and she learned English and never spoke any Germans. One of these things to watch out for since this wall has gone up is to watch out for um, viruses and viruses have already been used against Russia there was like I said I mentioned one was uh, mentioned uh, was used in Krasnodar I can't remember exactly the year and uh, with all these bio labs in Ukraine I'm I'm not I might not be accurate but it's, was it 46 that they admitted to Ukraine admitted to but at least 30 bioweapons labs, and a lot of them probably have been at least uh, shut down. You can't bomb them because then you spread these pathogens that they were creating in these laboratories. Um, but there's a lot of them still operating. And, and then they also, uh, Russia uncovered plans that's, that, that stated that they were, they were making plans to use, uh, I think it was, uh, put viruses in the water supply that infected Belarus. So, and then when you put up walls all over and people cannot have free movement from one country to the next, and then you infect that country with viruses, and then everything's gonna be isolated and uh, wipe out a lot of people. And as you know, the World Economic Forum, one of their main goals is population reduction. And if there, if there are no major wars going on, you know, they're going to start some wars and they're going to also be using viruses to try to reduce the world's population. <laughs> Sounds all conspiracy theory, you know, nonsense, but anybody watching this knows that this is not nonsense. I, even, I don't even like talking about it because it sounds so silly, but it's... <laughs>
silly as it is, it's all true. But even more with walls. There was a, uh, back in 2015, if you remember, there was a, the, the older former prime minister of Ukraine was, uh, let's see, Arseniy uh, Yatsenyuk. And he was a kind of a poor, lower middle class type of guy at that time. And it was uh, Victoria Nuland mainly, as you, as you heard the tapes, you know, there's recordings that have been released. And Victoria Nuland from the State Department of the United States says, he's our guy. And they, they, they installed him. He was uh, the prime minister of the Ukraine, uh, not the president, but the prime minister, you know, give it, getting great power at that time. It's just some, some, some little guy, I guess, a lower middle class type of person. And, uh, but he, one of his missions was to be, uh, you know, putting up walls and they like, there's supposed to be some wall between, at least in places between uh, Ukraine and, and Russia. And you know, he got huge sums of money from who knows the U S government or private businesses or whatnot. And the wall never was built, but he also got a lot of money for other projects and things. And, uh, they never materialized. So lo and behold, Yatsen Yuk is now retired, lives in the U.S., and is a billionaire. Isn't that amazing? It's, a, it's like magic, isn't it? You know, and this is like, just like Zelensky. A few months ago, they said he became a billionaire. And a lot of people are saying that around the end of January, he will be a multi-billionaire. So isn't that incredible how your country being destroyed, you become a billionaire. How does that work? You know, and oh, that's not suspicious. That's not suspicious at all, is it? My, my, my God. Makes me wonder how much uh, um, the Bidens have been earning this past while here. And remember Obama, I think he was, when he became president, it was like, I, I think I remember reading his, uh, his fortune was uh, estimated to be like around 2.5 or 2.8 million. And from what I've heard, he's got 28 million now. And you don't get that from a salary from being president. And, you know, Bill Clinton, of course, got vast, vast sums of money just for giving a speech somewhere. And you know how that was. That's not for the speech. It's uh, you don't really know what the heck was going on. They had, of course, the, then the Clinton Foundation and a lot to be said about that. But it's strange. Nobody ever talks about that now. I don't even I haven't even heard of the Clinton Foundation lately. So who knows what's going on there? <laughs> Very interesting stuff. So if somebody out there knows more or knows something about it, just uh, maybe put that in the comments. I'm learning quite a bit from a lot of people in comments. And, uh, you know, it's nothing's verified, but, uh, you know, if I hear about it and I can look things up a little bit on my own, hopefully, and find out, you know, and uh, it's the same thing with you out there. You should be looking up things that I say. So a lot of things that I'm not really that sure about, and I'll tell you whenever I can, when I can remember, or when it comes to be conscious with me, such as this, uh, the protests in Saudi Arabia. And I saw some photos and I didn't see any signs. I saw a bunch of Saudi looking type people standing around, but no signs. So I, I don't know if that was part of that or not. Might be fake news. You know, normally you don't get so much fake news from the Russian side, but, uh, but you never know, you know, it can come from anywhere. And, uh, but uh, what scares me the most is uh, being here is uh, this bioweapons threat, you know, you know, these are these are these are people that are infected themselves, but they're infected with some sort of a hatred. And, and I am just so amazed, you know, and I'm sure a lot of you are, too. How can you hate people for just being Russian? You know, and what does Russia do to the West? I mean, when you think about all of these these accusations, well, where is the evidence? Where is the evidence that Putin did this or Putin is doing that? Like, I found my car keys, so Putin didn't take my car keys. You know, it was me. It was me that did that. <laughs> you know, I still haven't found that sock that was in the dryer, and I just just disappeared. So I I kind of suspect him there, but I don't even have a dryer, so. But that's just to, you know, say that he could be guilty of something somewhere. And, uh, oh, another thing really important, you know, 
is you hear about this uh, this price cap. You know, they're trying to put a price cap on oil. You know, and now they're threatening India. They're threatening India that they have to go along with this price cap, the United States. And I wrote something about that here. They said uh, they must abide or else. You know, India will be cut off from Western shipping and cut off from Western insurance, which I guess that's where most all the insurance takes place is in the West. When the West cuts you off from insurance, you know, the ships aren't going to sail whatever, you know, whenever you're shipping oil. So, and I don't think that there's a pipeline that goes from Russia to India. So it's being, you know, delivered by ship. So I think there's a word for that. Is that blackmail or is that extortion? Is that both? <laughs> you know, more evidence. The good guys are now the bad guys and the bad guys are now the good guys. Gosh, you know, did you ever thought you'd see the day and then they do it right out in the open? You know, it's not like some secret back door sort of stuff. They come right out and say it, you know, you do what we tell you to do or else you're going to be punished. Gosh. Uh, the West, particularly the U.S., is becoming, you know, what is it? It's desperate, insane, and even to the point of being wicked. They're wicked now very wicked and we're experiencing a revolution like I just said you know if the good turn out to be the bad and the bad are now changing to be the good I guess that's what you call a revolution and I from the things I'm hearing out of Vladimir Putin's mouth it seems like uh, they seem like very good things to hear and Biden talking about hate and doing all kinds of nasty things that doesn't sound like it's a great to me <laughs> but anyway that's mostly all I wanted to say it's uh it's like you're just now looking at the world and you and you're starting to see remember when the USA was loved by everybody you know at least we had the perception everybody had the perception that the USA were the good guys and now you see like say for example in this uh, Shanghai cooperation meetings and uh, and and even other other meetings Val die whatever people you know listen and pay more far more attention to Vladimir whatever Vladimir Putin says and does than they do when Biden is there you know and you can't even ask Biden a question I you can't even answer the question at least nothing he can't really answer a question to the point where you can understand whatever he's saying so uh, and I think even a lot of the people in Europe and the United States even are, are realizing you know I mean it's, it seems obvious to me a lot of people you know like I said but people are making these comments and most of them are are in uh, from the United States I guess you know they know what's going on and it's very sad that even somebody like like Joe Biden could actually become president because they knew about these things about this guy before before the uh, that election with Trump and it makes you wonder you know I mean you see the you saw these uh, these rallies or something these uh, you know on the presidential election with Biden and Trump and and Biden would get like 10 people and Trump would get 10,000 in the same place and it's it, it's it reminds me of back when John McCain was having these little room meetings and they said he likes these town hall gatherings better than stadiums and stuff well the fact of the matter is John McCain could not fill a stadium <sighs> then you saw Ron Paul for example and how they screwed Ron Paul over back in those old days you know and then they made sure I think it was like 60 days before the election he was banned from television I mean a shadow ban I mean a ban that uh, that they never even announced but uh, but was actually happening so so he he was not on any any television i think it was like 30 days maybe i don't anyway all the tools that they use to make you think and believe what they want you to believe it's just, it's just incredible you know that's what i'm so grateful about you people watching and the, that there are people out there that's whose brains are working in there yeah the united states has certainly lost lost their place in the hearts and minds of most all the people on earth now in spite of in spite of the control of the media
so and um, I don't know if I'm sad to say this or not I guess I'm not sad to say but I just have to say more than anything else like I said in another video nobody nobody challenged me on that in the comments or anything but it's it seems to be apparent that at least at least as far as uh, as um, morality is concerned Vladimir Putin seems to be more the leader of the free world than most anybody else so I just see that as fact so with that anybody that uh, the algorithms have brought to watch this video and if you like what I'm saying you can uh, subscribe I would like that it's not like I'm out for any kind of money or anything but uh, uh, I wouldn't even know how to do that I'm sort of an idiot when it comes to all this multimedia stuff I admit it I admit it even though I'm so brilliant but uh, yeah just subscribe and it's uh, it may it, well if, if anything else it helps my ego a little bit so um, yeah, subscribe and uh, and uh, yeah and then I'll see you around in the future and as I always like to say that I will be getting better because I'm still living living in a small room out of a suitcase and when I get my my computer going and I get a a real desk, a place I can write with, things like that. I should be able to come up with better content. However, I'm also doing Russian classes right now, and that's where, where most of my, uh, um, most of my time is is being taken, because it's far more important that I. Well, I don't. I'm, I tell you what, I'm not going to get so proficient in Russian in such a short period of time where I can really understand what everybody's talking about on the news. But I'll certainly try. It's definitely a key to uh, me bringing better content is learning Russian, so so that's a priority right now. Anyway, thanks for joining me, and uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks again.